guys, my name is Lisa. Um, welcome back to my channel. I am taking the channel in a little bit different direction. I had said I wanted to do beauty and lifestyle and this is actually my first non-beauty video. Um, I want to talk today about 2020 and um, salvaging 2020. I know that for myself, I had a lot of hopes and dreams for 2020. I put a lot of pressure on 2020. At the end of 2019, I was like, 2020 is going to be the year. We're going to, I'm going to lose weight. I'm going to save money. I'm going to stay out of debt. I'm going to um, go on a fabulous vacation. I'm going to um, start changing my role in my company and try to actually run the business instead of being in the business. Um, there were so many things I had planned for 2020, including this channel. And of course, 2020 happened. It has been a whirlwind of whirlwind of events. And um, I think a lot of us got derailed, especially with the coronavirus. All of our lives changed when the coronavirus occurred. Kids, um, kids were out of school. Parents had to stay home with kids. People were working from home. Businesses had to close down. Some of them shut down permanently and, and um, never came back. So many things happened, and um, it it really changed everything. It changed the way we socialize. So many of us haven't we've and we are still living through that. So during that period, um, we all realized we were living history. That this was different. This was something we've never seen before. And I think especially with that transition of spending more time at home, spending more time alone, a lot of us kind of got a little bit lax about our goals. We decided either that this was not the year to do this, or this is not a good time, or um, we just let ourselves get derailed. So how do we do this? How do we get back on track? So I had three goals going into 2020. At the end of 2019, I was watching a video somewhat similar to this. I watch a lot of productivity, goal setting, um, you know, realizing your dreams type videos and one of the things that um somebody mentioned was what was the one thing that they did or changed in 2019 that made the biggest impact on their lives and for me i'm always very kind of forward thinking i do like looking at the past and um looking and, and appreciating what I've accomplished or trying to learn from something that happened in the past. But I'm mostly very much very forward thinking. So when that question came up, I actually asked myself, what can I do and what can I change that would make the biggest impact on me? And I decided that that was to um, remove sugars and starchy carbohydrates from my diet. And I don't want to say I'm on a full-on keto diet, but I am. Um, I do say that I'm on a low-carb diet, and so that means that I don't eat any grains. I don't eat any um, anything with added sugars. I limit my fruit intake uh, to basically just berries, and and even that is just a rare treat. And um, I don't eat any starchy vegetables, corn, potatoes, things like that. And um, so I started. The, I started the year okay, and then of course, as usual, um, I allowed those things to creep back into my life, and then they just became regular parts of my diet. Um, but then in, um, oh, about a month ago, I say, I said, you know what, I I chose this as the, as the number one um, thing to change about my life, and I really have to give it a good try. I have to say, I made a a real effort and one of the things that I had to get past was the idea that this was temporary or that this was something that I could kind of jump on and off and um, what made me what made me really shift my thinking was the fact that and this is me and what worked for me I'm not saying this is going to work for you I'm just saying my own gift just sharing with you my own thought process of how I got from here to there and that is the fact that I have an employee who is a vegetarian and she is a vegetarian, like from birth, and um, she um, acknowledges that if she, like if she, you know, will try to warn her that refried beans might have some pork products in them or some lard. And she's like, well, you know, if I don't know, then 
um, then it's then it's okay. It's you know I will allow myself that. Um, sh but she so she's not so so stringent like that that she questions everything. But you know if we try to wave a piece of steak in front of her or a chicken leg or something, she's certainly not tempted to eat it. So. Um, it occurred to me that she is basically, she is a vegetarian 100% of the time. She is a vegetarian on holidays. She is a, vaca uh, a vegetarian on vacations. She doesn't take Saturdays off and eat a steak. She is a vegetarian seven days a week. And that is the mindset that I needed to embrace and take on with this low carb lifestyle. That I do not eat sugars and starchy carbs. 365 days a week. I don't eat them on vacations. I don't eat them on my birthday. I don't eat them on holidays. I don't eat them when I'm stressed out. I don't eat them. I just like as much as she's a vegetarian, I am a meatitarian and I am a meatitarian 365 days of the week or the year. So that shift really has helped me. There's days when I've come in and I have been exhausted and stressed and I would have eaten a cupcake or some cookies or something, but I have actually um, sought out some low carb alternatives. And I wouldn't say that they are daily things that I eat. They're not ideal, but they help me stay on track. They help me stay on this lifestyle so that I don't go eat, really go off the rails and that has helped me tremendously i will one day um eventually make a video showing you my favorite low carb snacks that help me stay on track but right now this is about setting goals and um and attaining those and reaching for those um still in 2020 so i'm gonna try to stay stay on point i know i'm i'm like really good at going on tangents and taking the conversation elsewhere but trying to really stay on point um so anyway, that, that has helped me uh, get back, back on track. The second goal that I had for myself was to declutter and get rid of at least 50% of my belongings. I know that you were seeing this very cute zoomed in vision of my world, but if you saw the disaster that surrounds me, you would be like, what? Who lives like that? Um, I'm sitting in my makeup room and I'm just surrounded by piles and piles of makeup and things are on the floor and things have fallen over on their side. And it's just, it's just, it's like a crazy person lives here. So I have actually been um, making it a goal um, that every weekend I make sure our garbage is picked up on Mondays and I make sure that garbage can is full every Sunday night that I am, you know, it just seems like things come into the house, but nothing ever leaves the house. So I'm trying to work towards making sure things are leaving the house. Um, things are getting donated. They're getting discarded every week. And, um, you know, it didn't happen overnight, but we're still, we're, we're still in June. And I think it's, I think it's going to happen by the end of the year. If not, I'm going to have made a really, really strong effort, which is a lot closer than I've ever gotten in any other year. The third goal I had was to start this YouTube channel. My original plan had been to start this channel in 2019, but I allowed life and different circumstances to get in the way. And procrastination, really, um, if I'm being super honest, it just... I just couldn't, um, I just couldn't summon the, the energy. So, and the reality is I didn't get started on this. Now I was doing a lot of prep work. I love prep work. I love planning. I love getting things ready. But then when it comes to the actual execution, sometimes it doesn't follow up. So I had done a lot of, of prep work and, and buying equipment and buying things like these backgrounds and uh, making sure I had plenty of makeup and wrote down lists and lists of video topics. I, I was preparing my plan, but I wasn't executing. So um, at the end of March, I realized, oh my goodness, we're already in March. And um, so the coronavirus course came about um, at the end of February, mid-March. And mid-March is kind of when all the shutdowns were happening in the country. And I, to be honest, I expected my business to slow down. I expected to be kind of working from home and having some time to devote to the channel. Well, what really actually happened, and I, I would just say this right now. I was very, very fortunate. I was very, very blessed. My business did not slow down. I actually got new business during that period. Um, clients asked for additional services from that period because 
Uh, we had PPP happening, which was the Paycheck Protection Program, and they needed reports and they needed numbers and things. It was an incredibly busy time for my business. And, um, you know, I my business keeps me pretty busy, and we haven't talked about that on this channel, but I am a small business owner. Um, I have five employees. I have 50 to 60 clients. We provide an array of services for them. It is a bookkeeping business, and so when I say an array, it all falls into that into that world of bookkeeping. Um, but um, they all, you know, most of them needed help. I had a few clients that were affected by um, the shutdown and things like that, and we have yet to see the long-term effects of how COVID-19 affected businesses. But for the for for the time being, most of my clients are stay are are, uh, are continuing to move forward and and be able to stay in business. So um, again. I acknowledge I was very fortunate. I am very fortunate. My employees know that they're very fortunate that they were able to get up and go to work every day and um, have still have plenty of work. So, uh, but beyond that, while I was at the very beginning expecting to have the time to be able to work on the channel, that time really never came. So I had to create that time and I had to carve that time out. That's why there's so many makeup videos and will probably continue to be a lot of makeup videos because um, while I didn't have the specific free time to work on the channel, I, I chose to utilize something that I do every day, which is put on my makeup, make myself presentable, and, and um, share that with you and make that a part of the channel, trying out new makeup. I was already doing that. I was already doing that in my everyday life, but I just have decided to start filming that. I made it work for me. So the very first video got uploaded exactly two months ago on April 16th, 2020. And um, as of the filming of this video, there are 15 videos up, which is not a whole lot I, I acknowledge, but guess what? It is some, it is something, it's some content. And we're continuing to put content up. We're shooting for two to three videos a week. Those are the three things that um, I work towards um, and the goals that I had set. And I, while well, I started out the first quarter of the year really not moving towards those goals, not executing those goals, I have gotten myself back on track. And I encourage you to do the same thing. So, I, um, so how do you do that? What do you do? So I would say start with looking at what your goals were at the beginning of the year. What were your resolutions? If you didn't have any written down goals, I have to believe if you're watching this video that you had a vision for 2020 of some kind, an idea, a hope. So start with that and then make it more specific. Um, maybe you were going to grow your business. If you were going to grow your business, which is a very um, kind of airy fairy idea in itself, but instead say, okay, I was going to grow my business by 20%. I was going to grow my business by 30%. Or if you were like, okay, I'm gonna start eating healthy. I'm finally gonna start eating healthy. Well, what does that mean? What does that mean? What change in diet does that mean for you? Be very specific. Maybe you are gonna go vegetarian. Maybe you're gonna go low carb. Maybe you're going to stop eating fast food. You need to be very specific with whatever those goals were, whatever those hopes were. Um, but if you already had some specific goals and resolutions, let's revisit those, look at those. Are they still attainable for you? Are they still attainable in the current environment that we're in? Fortunately for me, my goals were still attainable. I could still move forward with them, but your life may have changed. And so your business may have shut down. You may have lost a job that you were hoping to get a promotion or a raise by the end of the year. So you need to pivot, you need to be flexible, but you need to realize you can still move forward in some way. Life has not stopped. You can still continue moving forward. You can still continue working towards something. Don't throw 2020 away. It's not, don't waste it. These are precious days. So once you actually look at your goals, and or have developed new goals, written down some you know some new things that you want to accomplish. You need to well, first of all, like I said just now, write them down. People who write down their goals and dreams 
are 40% more likely to actually achieve them. But these goals and dreams, they need to be specific. Like I stated before, instead of saying you were going to, you want to lose weight, say, I want to lose 10 pounds. I want to reduce by two dress sizes, you know, whatever those goals are. Um, so once you have your very specific goal, then you need to look at your calendar. And yes, I keep a paper calendar still. I keep a daily and a monthly paper calendar. Yes, I, I have electronic calendars also, but I carry that paper calendar with me everywhere and um, I would be very lost without it. So look at your look at your calendar and write in the steps and um, the tasks that you need to accomplish that goal for the next several months. It might be a, a task that you do weekly. It might be a task that you do monthly. Or, well, what you should do is write down a task each week that can help you move towards that goal. Then at the beginning of each month or at the end of each, each month, have a check-in with yourself. How far along have you gotten with your tasks? Did you, did you check off those tasks? every week are you on um are you on schedule to meet that goal at the end of the year um it's important to have these check-ins and it's important to keep these goals in front of you at the forefront write them down write them at the very top of the calendar keep them in front of you so you are consciously continuing to work towards these goals you still have six months left in this year these goals are completely still attainable. You can accomplish so much in six months. You can accomplish a lot in a week. You can accomplish a, a lot in a month. You can change your life in six months. I promise you that. If you, if you focus on it and you track your goals the way we just discussed, you can do it. I know you can do it. I'm doing it and I know you can do it too. Guys, thank you so much for joining me today. Um, I, if you if you enjoyed this video and you'd like to see more videos like this please comment like um, let me know what other kind of videos you'd like to see have I mentioned anything in this video that you would like me to expand on um, I enjoy I enjoy discussing these types of things because I, like I said I'm a very forward moving person and I like processes and I like to see how we can do these things and I like the execution of it well as I said before, sometimes I, I lack execution, but I'm making myself accountable. That's part of what I'm doing with this channel is sharing these things with you and making them accountable um, and, and, and letting you guys help keep me accountable for these things. Thank you again for joining me today. Um, subscribe if you haven't already subscribed and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.